The one that I feel like should not even exist on the face of this planet. How did we go from this to this? And it's not just that. As of this recording, I'm hearing about two more Korean BL dramas that will air around the end of the month. I wasn't ready for this wave. I was looking forward to Semantic Era and Cherry Blossoms after winter. But then out of nowhere came the others. Day by day, I'd come across some juicy clip on Instagram. Oh, here another Korean BL drama has popped into the scene. And I just couldn't keep up with it. Which is why I've made the decision to finally binge watch all the Korean BL dramas of 2022. Which means only up to March. <laughs> Yes, I bought a popcorn machine for this binge session. The machine was scaring the shit out of me so I put it on the floor just in case. But big mistake. It's my first time making popcorn. I'm back. And I have a lot to say. So we're gonna go from the one I enjoyed the most to the cursed one that shouldn't even exist on the face of this planet. Let's start with Semantic Error, my favorite, despite what I initially felt. But in my defense, the reason I said it was okay la. Which, fun fact, the intonation of the la that we Malaysians and Singaporeans like to put behind our words play an important role. So if I say okay la, I mean to say, hey, it was not bad, it was quite enjoyable. But if I say okay la, I mean to say meh. So in my defense, the mistake I did was watching the first episode without subs. So Semantic Error is an adaptation of the BL manhwa by the same title. It's about Sangwoo. Will we ever escape this name? This should become a forbidden name. So Sangwoo, a rigid rule-abiding computer science student, and Jaeyoung, a design major who is a fun and carefree spirit, both of them start off the wrong foot, one thing leads to another, and we have Jaeyoung making Sangwoo question everything he has ever known in life. In my opinion, the reason why this drama is a huge success is because the story itself is good. I love love this manhwa. It's one of those BL gems out there. You'd find me laughing my ass off when I first sat down to read this. So take a good story, pair that with these eye candies, and you get one of the best BL live actions ever. This is very, very well made. And like, am I considered all for thinking two idols? I mean, one ex-idol. Acting in a BL drama is just very surprising. Is it allowed in this era? I'm from the fan service era, okay? I would have been dead if I was a fan of donkeys and then seeing Jay chan acting in a BL. The fan fictions? But like, he was born in 2001. What? 2001 was like yesterday! This is why I don't think I can ever get back to liking K-pop. You know, go back to the beautiful year of 2008. Because all of these new groups are gonna have babies who were born after the year 2000. I really wanna see these two on screen again. Their chemistry is just too good. When Jie was an enjoyable character, Korean BL dramas do a good job in making the female characters likable and just a part of the gang. Not some annoying homophobic female. I even rewatched this a couple of times because I just wanna see them on screen again. Like, feed my food soul, my ravenous Fijian soul. I'm not really gonna complain about the 8 episodes because once you look at the rest of this list, you're gonna be grateful that we even got 8 episodes. Next, to my star. So season 2 is still not out yet, it's supposed to be out later this year, but I actually missed the first season that came out last year, so I watched this in the meantime. It's about Kang So Jun, a celebrity who's trying to hide from the media after a rumor of him being involved in a fight, so he ends up staying with Han Ji Woo, a chef, while waiting for things to die down. What happens when they're different personalities? personalities clash living under the same roof. Now this one falls more on the realistic side which I truly enjoyed. My mom had a period where she was obsessed with the Sundance channel that had a lot of those independent movies and I kinda liked that realistic feeling which to my star also had cause I'm too old for the kyuns and the toki tokis. Kinda like an enemies to lovers trope but very Sundance like slow pacing and just realistic. The acting wasn't fast, it felt like how normal human beings would speak to each other. Because sure Korean dramas BL or not will without a doubt top Japanese and Thai dramas. Taiwanese is amazing but not at the Korean level, they're special in their own way. But then K-dramas will still have that small bit of cringe in their acting usually. But this drama didn't really have that. And I wasn't expecting the issue to be a we are men, this is a normal kind of thing. I thought the story would revolve more around Kang So Joon as a celebrity because I've been in a BL hole for too long. I'm used to the I'm not gay, I just like you thing. And like Kang So Joon is such a bright character. All I need is one smile to make me smile. So if you're in the mood to curl up in a burrito on a rainy day with some hot cocoa, then this would be a good BL to tune into. Next, we have Blooming, another adaptation based on a BL manhwa. But this time one that I had not read yet, I only read it after watching the drama. So this is based on the manhwa titled Who Can Define Popularity. It's about Siwon who used to get bullied for his weight and all going through a transformation, a makeover and trying to live life as this new prince
remains charming. In order to never experience that bullying hell again, he becomes too conscious of what others think of him, trying to be that reliable, popular, handsome classmate. And then we have Hyung Da Woon, a natural, rich Mr. Popular who ends up noticing this odd trait of Siwon's. So before watching this when I was marking my calendar, I did see many articles mentioning that this was directed by the same director of To My Star, so I had high expectations for this. Kinda lived up to them. You know, was it as good as To My Star? No. But the acting, the pacing was okay. I like how natural their relationship felt. From the teasing, to the friendship, and then the relationship. I mean, to squeeze it all in that short amount of time is impressive enough. But I am aware that some manhwa readers weren't happy that the side couples didn't get screen time. But as someone who only read the manhwa after reading the drama, and I'm still in the midst of reading it, I can't say much. I don't feel as strongly. But I have to mention this. The uncanny resemblance of Siwon's actor to win. Right? From the Together series, the Thai BL drama, the face structure. Every time I looked at him, I saw Win, And I'm like, Sarawat, do you have any idea what your boyfriend is up to? And then we have O Boarding House, another adaptation of a BL manhwa by the same title, with a bunch of eye candies. Wait, how old are they again? Anyone born in the year 2000 and later is immediately out of my radar. Y'all are babies to me. Oh, my age. But like, he looks older than me. Why do I give out such childlike vibes? Even I'm aware of that, okay? I don't look or sound like a 25 year old. I don't even feel like a 25 year old. Zendaya is my age. What the hell? Why does she look older than me? So this is about Sul Won. Sul Won? Sul, Sul, Sul Won. I butcher Korean names. Who's left in charge of his mother's boarding house. Or like, you know those share houses in Japan? Yeah, kinda like that. So he ends up having to deal with life living under the same roof with a unique bunch. This cousin and this wacko writer who's particular about noise, things get even more challenging when he develops a crush on one of the new tenants, Cholsu, a PE teacher. I had a good laugh watching this. I saw clips of a certain scene making its round on the internet and I assumed that it was a serious drama because I had not read the manhwa yet. But nope, it's a comedy, nothing much to the plot. I will say that I thought Cholsu was going to develop something with his student. Yes, this guy is supposed to be his student, but that wasn't the case. We need more responsible teachers like you in BL. The characters were very funny and likeable. Suwon was very adorable with how he was treating Cholsu, but it was just sad to see how blatantly ignorant he was to Bong Dog's feelings. Like this dude has been by your side for centuries and this is how you repay him? But I wasn't that hooked onto it because the whole vibe of this drama is very light-hearted, too comedic for me to take anything seriously. Just watch it for laughs. Never mind, I'll eat your cake. You know, I'll eat all your cakes. Okay, that came out wrong. Cherry Blossoms After Winter. So I was looking forward to this ever since the announcement last year. Do I even need to summarize this cotton candy? Hebum grew up together with Taesun, the son of the adoptive family or mother who took him in after the death of his parents. They used to be close but grew distant as they aged, and Hebum always thought that it was because of his presence. But they somehow end up clearing up the misunderstanding when they end up in the same class. Now how will Hebum feel when he finds out the real reason Taesun avoided him before this? I was a little meh with this in the beginning, but then I got sucked in after watching Taesun beat up the bully. It was just nice. Of course, it's never going to top the manhwa, but it's a decent watch. It's still ongoing as of this recording, and I'm just enjoying seeing the story in live action format. You could hear me squealing at some of the iconic manhwa moments. Yeah, so I'm not that particular with this. I feel like the actors are doing a good job. The actor for Heibum is just a natural ball of innocence. And then we have First Love Again. So Yeon Seok, a novelist, has memories of his past life dating back to 300 years. And in his past life, he has always reunited with his love, Hayeon. As he searches for Hayeon in this lifetime, he is shocked to discover that his first love is born as a man. Will he be able to look past this? Ah past life reborn story. Now, I'm not a fan of these kind of rebirth stories because I don't believe in destiny. I get that in Buddhism and Hinduism, this is the circle of life. But when they use this to be like, oh, we were always meant to be. Bullshit. Can't two individuals meet and fall in love just because? Do we really need some sort of dramatic connection from the past to make their relationship solid? And that's why we don't have that in my manga. Follow me on Instagram for updates on my manga. But this drama is quite okay, despite being supernatural in nature. It's actually still watchable. Yes, I have a problem with supernatural K-dramas. Just wait for this last one that we'll be looking at. I don't understand though, how they saw this lady's face on his face. I get that she's his sister in this lifetime, but am I supposed to see a resemblance? Because they're not even close. How 
lion in this lifetime is a man. But his sister is the one with his past face? Huh? Am I supposed to pretend that his sister just resembles that Hyun in the past? That they're two different people? Are they expecting the audience to play along? Because it doesn't make sense. That aside, this was a decent watch. I did let out one or two chuckles here and there. But usually, I don't have high hopes for supernatural Korean dramas. Just not my cup of tea. Kissable lips. The cursed one. The one that I feel like should not even exist on the face of this planet. So Junho is a vampire on the verge of extinction. And the only cure is to drink blood of a pure blood to become human. Lo and behold, he meets Minhyun, a pure blood. He then gets close with the intention to drink Minhyun's blood, but other feelings develop instead. Now, I know everyone was losing their minds over this kiss scene, but I have to be honest, I did not enjoy this drama one Bit. You see, Korean supernatural dramas, BL or not, are cringy as hell. Someone needs to say this already, okay? They're on the same level as Twilight cringe. Korean supernatural dramas are just live actions of fan fictions. Bring it out into the real world and it's just a cringe fest. Because if you're gonna laugh at Edward Cullen, we have to laugh at this guy. It's the same and you cannot convince me otherwise. I really don't have anything nice to say about this, okay? The supernatural aspect really ruined it for me. Plus, the acting was off. The writing for this was so poor. It felt like someone just wanted in on the BL but then gave up at the story. I didn't even feel the appropriate emotions during the flashbacks. And the ending? Let's not go there. So there you go. My thoughts on the Korean BL dramas of 2022. Bear in mind, this is just up to March, April. Yeah, the number of episodes and duration might be too short. I, are you complaining? Huh? But I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. We'll get our semantic error season 2. Once Park so is done with his military service. So for those who have watched any of these dramas that I listed out, let me know what you think. Do you agree with me or not? I wanna see, you know, if there's even a human being who actually enjoyed watching Kissable Lips.